okay so same starting So I will just remove these because we were putting the okay. So let's just call it A, B, C, D, and here I will write A, A, B, B, C. Okay. Now top to bottom interconnections. Start with the top A, B, C. D. So only D. Okay. Wherever only D is there in the P MOS transistors, P D D. Okay. So top connection is complete. Now here also one complicated connection is there in one single region or in one single node. All four transistors have to be connected. How can we do that? Okay, so we want A, B, C, D. All four transistors. So I have C, D here. I have A, B here. Okay, so let's try that. C, D connected to A, B. Okay, any other connection would have been wrong. C D if you are connected to B C wrong because A will not be connected there. Number one, number two is you have connected across transistor C a wire shorting transistor C. Transistor C D to A alone is also wrong because B would not have been connected. So the only way to implement that four node connection is through this interconnection C D to A B. Okay, so now that is also done. Other side, all three transistors are connected to output. So let's draw a output in the middle. Okay. Now, A, B, C. D is not connected to output. Only A, B, C. And conveniently, as you can see, those are available to us. B, C is connected to output. A is connected to output. So A, B, C, all are connected. Pull-up network is complete. Okay. Pull down network actually is very simple. D and A are connected to output, and A this is wrong because this is A B. D this is wrong because this is C D. So only D and only A. Okay. And A B C in series in my connection, A B C in series automatically there. Okay, and C and D connected to ground. Very simple. That's all done. Okay, so circuit is very important. Number one. Number two is the interconnections. Just C which. Region is most appropriate for the interconnection. Use that region to realize the connection. Okay.
Okay, so A B plus C, the whole into D complement and circuit same as before, and uh, we have to form the interconnections. So let's see if we can do it. So D A B, okay, all three from the P MOS are connected to power supply. D A B. so d only okay a b let us see if this works so d a b all three connected to vdd and this point a b c all three connected to each other okay so one side of a b we have connected to power supply that is this side okay now other side of a and other side of b and other side of c okay that is this point has both b and c and that can be connected to a so just done b and c was already there connected that to a other side of b other side of c connected to a other side of c is connected to d which is connected to the output node automatically there okay other side of c is connected to d in the circuit but that internal connection is there here so this full pull up network is complete okay and now pull down network pull down network one side of d connected to output so take that from only d connected to output other side d a c three transistors are connected and we have to take this because d and other side of d is coming there and here d and c are there right so other side of dc connected only to transistor a so be little careful don't choose this region because this is ab okay choose the other side where only transistor a is there so only a here connected to d and c and a and b series already there a and b series and this other side of a is connected to b and this is also connected to c so directly take this point connected to ground that is this bottom connection 
so this is your stick diagram layout or stick diagram okay it is equivalent only thing is if you use dimensions you will get the layout so this is the last example that we will do for layout i'll just check if there are any other examples i think we have covered all the questions that we have done <coughs> yeah okay so that completes the layout part uh quite a few examples the simple rules are first always draw the circuit okay without circuit don't go for the layout another thing is the layout can be quite tricky so go through it step by step start from the top slowly start implementing the connection hopefully without having to change anything you will be able to complete all the connections and do the pull up network or pull down network first and then do the other network okay so this is a definite question if you know how to draw uh circuit and convert that to stick diagram and layout anywhere between 8 to 10 marks in the internals and exam you can guarantee yourself because it's a very important part of the course very important part of any practical vlsi design course and for job interviews everything this is very important okay so this is almost 10% of the course out of 100 marks in internals or in exam okay about 10 marks will be for stick diagram and circuit stick diagram and layout okay so the last topic in uh, unit 2 uh we might have left very small things but almost everything we have covered so the last topic is related to uh, what is called as uh, inverter voltage transfer characteristic or what is called in the book as dc transfer characteristic um dc is a sort of a confusing name because we are all uh, aware of dc and uh, ac and uh, this has not much to do with dc and ac generally there are many types of analysis uh, dc analysis means that we are just interested in the relation between input and output okay we are not concerned with the speed so we can draw that for example dc
okay so some many types of analysis are there uh, i have not covered all of them but in uh, dc analysis okay we are interested in what is called as the voltage transfer characteristic that is a relation between input voltage and output voltage input voltage is the independent variable okay and uh, with respect to that what is the output voltage so this type of analysis is what we are going to do now okay but just to try to understand what is the meaning of different types of analysis this is another analysis where we have on the x axis is time okay and the y axis may be again the same output voltage and we want to see how the output voltage varies with respect to time so that type of analysis is called as transient analysis and since we talked about dc we will also talk about ac analysis ac analysis is generally reserved for frequency domain okay frequency domain circuits uh, ac analysis will almost never be done for digital circuits we just don't do it okay it has no meaning ac analysis is very common more more common than transient analysis for uh, analog circuits analog and rf there frequency is everything right because if you're talking about communication circuits for example um, it all depends on the frequency which what type of communication are you doing uh, what is the frequency range uh, what is the this thing functionality etc so frequency is very important and we will design circuits that have certain operating characteristics at certain frequencies so there the x axis itself is frequency so this generally the parameter might be gain okay uh, the gain is one very important parameter for analog circuits uh, you will be doing it in the sixth semester in analog and mixed mode um, other parameters are there also uh, i can't think of anything right now but this is what is called as ac analysis we will be doing only these two okay we don't care much about ac in uh, digital circuits we are very interested in transient analysis because this will give us the speed of operation and we are also interested in other types of uh, data like power consumption etc that come from the transient analysis because transient analysis if you plot all the variables if you multiply voltage with current it is power so this analysis itself will give us a lot of information and uh, these two are more important for these uh, digital circuits okay so we will look at this one in this unit uh, transient analysis will come in the fourth unit okay so this analysis also and uh, this is true for a lot of things in digital circuits a uh, very detailed or a very comprehensive analysis will be done for the inverter but then you might complain all these teachers always they are like that only they will choose the simplest circuit and uh, do the analysis in the exam they will give the most complex circuit and do the analysis ask us to do the analysis that is typically the students complain but don't worry we will not do that uh, we are only interested in the inverter but why that is enough is that in practical situations that is when you uh, are looking at some particular circuit uh, there are very simple ways to convert that to equivalent inverter okay any gate maybe nand gate nor gate compound gate any gate any of the functions that we have seen so far they can all be converted to an equivalent inverter because just like resistances capacitances etc 
that are in series or in parallel can be uh, combined into equivalent resistance capacitance we can actually do the same for transistors also of course the uh, input if you have a and b you cannot have an input called a b so we are not worried about that type of this thing but in terms of the properties in terms of the functionality we can convert transistors in series or in parallel into equivalent single transistors so that is why we can convert all the transistors in the full up network into one single cmos transistors all the transistors in the pull down network into one single nmos transistor and we have just two transistors and that is nothing but our cmos inverter so we will only do the analysis we will only discuss that in the tests also but in practical situations we can convert them into a inverter and then we can do whatever analysis that will apply to the original circuit whatever numbers whatever parameters we are getting okay okay so v in and v out and we want to write all the parameters that is traditionally when we have a transistor we look at the voltages vgs and vds and in this case instead of vgs and vds we want them in terms of v in and b out so for that what we have to do is we have to see which are the drain and source terminals for each transistor then we can translate those in terms of the b in and b out so first let us start with the cmos transistor it has two terminals okay and uh, this is very important for many reasons any transistor in any circuit uh you should be able to write which is the source and which is the drain and uh, the definition to remember is that the source terminal is where the charge carriers are starting from and the drain terminal is where they reach so based on the current direction whichever circuit you have okay there will always be a automatic current direction because we have power supply and ground always okay current if it ever flows in this circuit will flow from the top into the bottom current can never flow out of ground because that is the negative most negative terminal and current can never flow into the power supply because that is the most positive terminal so this particular node okay whatever value it is at current can flow in this direction but never in this direction because this will be at most at vdd it can never be above so either current will not flow if it is at vdd or if current flows it will be in this direction okay and here current will flow from here to here or it will not flow current cannot flow from here into the output node so this is the current directions so once we have the current directions for each device we can clearly mark the source and drain cmos transistor this is the source this is the drain nmos transistor current is in this direction which means electrons have to start from here how to come there this is the only way in which they can flow so now we can write for each transistor
we want to eliminate these variables because our voltage transfer characteristic it's a curve it's only in terms of input and output there is no vgs vds and all that so we have to replace those generic names with what is particular for this circuit so device by device we can write vds cmos vds cmos this is vd this is vs so vds is nothing but vd minus vs so vd is p out minus v dd top terminal is okay v out minus v dd next terminal v g s okay then n mos transistor minus now source terminal is ground i don't have to write minus 0 i can just leave it similarly for the input also okay so this is for the circuit now let us try to so how what are the ways in which we can get a plot like this one way is if you can solve that is using some uh, techniques maybe it's a quadratic equation maybe it's a differential equation if you can solve some equations and get a solution for v out as a function of v in then just plot it right it's just a equation that is one way to get the relation what is another way is that the only way no that is not the only way another way is if we use a circuit simulator and we'll do that in the lab we'll generate the same plot in the lab also using a circuit simulator okay and uh, the third way that we are going to do now is by trying to solve it graphically that is we are going to try to generate the plot based on whatever information we have about the circuit so how do we do that so we will try to plot okay as v in increases what happens to the output voltage we will try to plot that so that is what we are going to do so first this analysis is divided into a few regions and it's uh, not very easy to say why because there is no other way literally but why these particular regions is that inside each of these regions certain properties of the transistor are true that is what is true is the operating conditions of the transistor stay the same that is two transistors might be on and in linear one transistor might be in saturation another might be in linear one might be off one might be in linear so that is the division we are going to divide this input voltage into a series of regions within each region okay the transistor properties stay the same if they change it means we are going to the next region that is the only difference and based on this analysis just remember that we have five regions okay a b c d e so let's start with region a okay the input voltage is at zero okay so if input voltage is at zero what is the value of output voltage by just looking at the circuit i can tell you this is the first point in my plot input is zero output is vdd because i know the functionality it is a inverter inverter means zero input output high so this is the first point in my curve now the question is from zero the input has gone to point 1 Does the output change? 
okay so input is at zero okay let us try to find out the regions of operation of pmos and nmos just see if the on or off okay pmos what is the value of the input zero so here vgs is zero minus vdd which is minus vdd so vgs minus vdd is lesser than because what is value of vtp it might be some negative number let us assume for this analysis okay so vdd let us again assume it is 2 volts no problem so i'll write that also okay so on and uh, n mos v in vgs equal to vn vn is a very small value we said okay 0 0.1 and that is definitely lesser than so it is off this is the first conclusion p mos is on okay n mos is off so then the question is can any current flow in this circuit p mos is on okay uh, if you calculate you will find out that i think it will be in linear region so it is in linear region transistor is also on does a current flow the answer for that is no okay because if any current flows through the p mos transistor it has to flow through the n mos also there is no other place for the current to go okay it cannot flow into the gate terminal because there is a open circuit it cannot flow here because there is no connection this is just floating so if the n mos is off p mos cannot conduct any current and this will be true for v in equal to 0 v in equal to 0.1 v in equal to 0.2 0.3 0.4 then when will this be true n mos is off so it will be true till the point where the n mos is turning on and that time p mos and n mos will both be conducting so when does the n mos turn on n mos turns on at vtn maybe some 0.5 volts 0.5 volts exactly okay so until then no current flows and because no current can flow through the circuit okay the output voltage has to continue at the same level the output node it cannot change the value it cannot discharge right because no current can flow means the charge has to stay the same so for different values of input up to this particular point output stays the same okay so this is called as region a it is called region a because within region a the properties or the regions of operation of both the transistors is the same which is n mos is off and p mos is in linear p mos is in linear if you do the analysis you will find that out but i don't know if i'll be able to finish this if i start this now so maybe i'll finish it yeah so where will i write that let me erase this so region a
how can i say it is linear without doing a analysis um for that we have to look at the vi characteristic in the vi characteristic okay the region that is closer to the origin where vds value is low that is the linear region where it is away from the origin in the x axis that is the saturation and this is true for nmos and pmos okay um no let's not draw it but this is true for nmos and pmos so in this case okay for the pmos transistor i know what is the value of vds v out is very high okay in fact v out equal to vdd so for the pmos transistor v d s is almost equal to 0 volts and whenever it is closer to the origin it is in linear region of operation so that is why i can write that so region a ends at threshold voltage of nmos transistor after that what happens to each transistor so now let us again do the same analysis so now v in is greater than vtn okay and if you do the analysis for nmos and pmos pmos okay is going to be here say greater than vtn so maybe it's 0.7 volts 0.7 minus 2 which is minus 1.3 it is still lesser than minus 0.5 so pmos is on still on okay in addition linear or saturation so for that we have to calculate so v in minus vdd for the pmos transistor v in is say again around 0.7 volts right that's what we decided so this is minus 1.3 and vgs minus vt so that is plus 0.5 versus vds vds is still it is close to vdd so this is still a very small value say it is 0.3 volts okay so minus 1.3 plus 1.5 so this is minus 0.8 minus 0.8 is that is vds is greater than vgs minus vt which means pmos continues to be in linear region nmos is definitely on okay we know that because vgs is greater than vt and in particular if you calculate the region of nmos it is the opposite v out is very high okay which means that vds for the nmos is going to be very high because vds for nmos is equal to v out v out is still something like uh, 1.7 or 1.8 volts still a very high value which means nmos is going to be in saturation first let us write this down this is called as region b okay and uh, what happens to the output voltage does the output voltage continue to be at vdd does the output voltage increase does the output voltage decrease that is what we are actually interested in because we want to plot that right so what happens to the output voltage first does it stay the same current is flowing right current is flowing from the top to the bottom and current is the same value we cannot have different value of current through pmos and nmos some constant current is flowing and uh, the analysis is not very easy because we have to uh, do a solution of a non linear equation to find out what is the value of the output voltage but what i can tell you is when that current is flowing okay the vds basically of the nmos and pmos they are going to be different from each other 
and the vds of the n mos is going to be such that it is going to start changing okay because the current is flowing and if you look at the vi characteristic based on the current the vds also changes so what will happen to the n mos transistor in some ways you can consider this node as getting discharged because when the output is beginning to sorry when the input is beginning to rise the output has to fall right that is the characteristic of a inverter so based on that this has to slowly start falling okay so this is the way in which the output will fall definitely it cannot increase uh, the highest power supply is vdd there is no amplification there is no transformer nothing so output cannot increase it cannot stay the same also because current is flowing and uh, because we know the functionality of a inverter is along with increase in output uh, increase in the input the output has to fall the output will slowly start to reduce and uh, now the question is how long does the output fall okay the output will fall to some level and uh, we can consider that until these two are still satisfied okay and when will they stop getting satisfied then we move to the next region and here okay so the output the n mos continues to be in saturation region but the p mos okay because the output has fallen the voltage across the p mos has increased because one side of the p mos already at vdd to begin with other side was vdd so voltage across the p mos was very high now as the output is falling okay the voltage across the p mos is increasing slowly so the next region is this is region b okay and the next region c is when both n mos and p mos are in saturation so there also the output will be falling okay and now the p mos switches into saturation permanently and the n mos okay after a certain time in region c the output voltage has fallen a lot which means that p mos continues to stay in saturation because its voltage across the p mos has increased a lot but the voltage across the n mos has reduced because the one side of the n mos is already at ground output has also reduced a lot so in region d is when the n mos switches into okay region d is when n mos is in linear and the p mos is in saturation and this voltage will continue to fall and the last region is when okay so when the input voltage goes very high okay so v in is very high and it will reach a point where v in is such that p mos transistor goes into off that is for example if v in equal to 1.7 okay 1.7 minus 2 equal to minus 0.3 which is greater than vtp so therefore p mos is off okay so that is the last region this continues to be in linear and here n mos is off so that is from this point onwards and actually we have to show it at
okay so beyond that the voltage cannot change because the same logic we applied here will apply here also this is region d and this is region e because in region e the pmos is off which means no current can flow so by that time the voltage should have fully reached zero level okay and beyond that the voltage doesn't change here also the voltage doesn't change so the bcd is the region of transition okay this is where the So let us just write a few points about this uh, voltage transfer characteristic. so it is a graphical analysis of the input and output relation it's not a analytical analysis it is not a simulation based analysis it's just a graphical analysis okay and two this we already mentioned why have we divided into five regions why not four why not eight why not 10 because as we go from input to output we divide it into regions only when the mode of the transistor changes if both are in linear mode i don't need to divide that into two or three regions within linear okay i know that current is flowing i know that voltage will be reducing why do i have to go from linear to saturation again that's a good question um, it's only to show the transition for one transistor from on to off and for the other transistor from off to on okay nmos starts at on and ends up being off pmos starts at off and ends up being on so just to show that transition we show these regions of operation you can start from the beginning and come to the end i can start from the low value and go to the high value okay and uh, what other things can we say so how much time do i have okay so if they say explain the voltage transfer characteristics of a inverter whatever we discussed just now along with whatever is on the board okay region wise we have to explain in particular i have not done it in much detail but you have to show okay how it is in linear saturation and all those things so this is just a uh, analysis of the Uh, voltage transfer characteristics so there's two or three things that we can see from this this is the ideal what is the best possible we have drawn a curve right and uh, if you ask me 
is this the best curve possible for any inverter no it's not the best curve possible for any inverter we want it to be something like this pulse because here okay there is a very nice transition that is up to some particular point okay if the input is given output is high low value of input beyond that input value the output is low so there is a sudden fall from high to low and uh, this is also good because okay this is a very very important point and uh, this is the single largest source of power consumption in vlsi circuits why do vlsi circuits consume power there are many reasons okay there are many components of power consumption this in regions b c d okay both nmos and pmos are on the input is changing input is not at a constant value in regions b c d input is continuously increasing okay so when the input is changing some power is consumed by the circuit because current flows if current doesn't flow okay then no power is consumed without any any sort of uh, this thing power consumption it requires a current flow without current flow you cannot have power consumption in regions a and region e okay no current flows which means that they can have no power consumption this doesn't have a bcd only there is a region a there is a region e end of story zero power consumption but here because of the natural way our transistors are designed we have to go through a bcd and this is where whenever the inputs are changing this is a very important point okay whenever the inputs are changing 